In these videos, we'll talk about fitting a function to data in order to learn about the system and predict its future behavior. Learning about the relationship between dependent variables, also known as outcomes or responses, and independent variables, that is, inputs or predictors, is called regression. We've seen scatter plots which indicate a relationship between two variables. For example, the figure here shows that there is some relationship between x and y, with higher values of x associated with higher values of y. Previously, we introduced the correlation coefficient rho as a measure of the strength of that association. However, as well as knowing how strong the association is, we also want to know the details. For example, how much of a change in y will be induced by a change in x. This is the idea of a regression. We find a mathematical function which describes our data and use it to build a better understanding of the system itself and to make predictions about its behavior. There are many reasons why you'd fit a model to data. One of the most important in many fields of science is to justify a theoretical prediction with empirical data. In this case, we'll generally have some specific mathematical functions, or several competing ones, which we fit in order to check how well they describe our observations. This is common in research science. Say, for example, we have a theory about plant growth in response to different levels of soil nitrogen. We would measure soil nitrogen, our independent variable or predictor, along with something like the height of the plant, the dependent or response variable, in order to get our data set. Then we express our ideas about the growth response mathematically, writing down some function that tells us what output to expect for what input. This function will usually depend on some unknown parameters, here labelled A, B, C, and so on, and by fitting the model we determine both the parameters and also to derive some measure of how well the function f describes the situation. Another reason to do model fitting is to tell you what to expect in cases you haven't yet seen. Here we might not have any theoretical motivation. Often, systems in physics or biology are simple enough to build a reasonably accurate mathematical model of. Think of something like a differential equation. Generally, if there is some theoretically motivated reason to expect a particular functional response, this will result in a good fit. However, we often don't have such motivation. In this case, however, we can still do something. This is because of Taylor's theorem. Taylor's theorem says that any function can be expanded as a polynomial series. f of x is equal to a0 plus a1 times x plus a2 times x squared and so on, for some constants a0, a1, a2. If x is less than 1, then x is greater than x squared, which is greater than x cubed, and so on. This means that the higher order terms are small and can be neglected, and the function can be approximated using only the first couple of terms. This means any function can be approximated over a small neighborhood by a line. For example, here we have a definitively non-linear function, but for x in the range 3 to 4, the line does a pretty good job of predicting the data. Taylor's theorem demonstrates why fitting lines to data often works, but also why it might not always reveal everything about the system we're studying, since outside of a small region the linear approximation might break down. So, let's talk about the simplest model, a linear function y is equal to m times x plus c. Here y is the dependent variable or the output, and x is the independent variable or the input. The two constants m and c are called fit parameters, or just parameters. For a linear function c is called the intercept and m is the slope. Here's an example of a linear fit to the data we showed in the first slide. The slope is 0.5 and the intercept is 3. We'll discuss this in more detail later, but this fit looks reasonable. The line seems to describe the overall trend of the data, and there are about the same number of points above and below the line. Most of the mathematics we'll talk about in these videos aims to formalize these intuitions. However, recall from earlier we've already seen the example where a power law was appropriate. This data is best described by a function like y is equal to a times x to the power of b. As we'll talk about later, there are a variety of methods we can use to deal with nonlinear data. One of the most important is transforming it so that it obeys a linear relationship. Generally, knowing the correct model to fit requires knowing something about the system you're studying. Sometimes there are good reasons to use particular functional forms. For example, y is equal to a exponential of minus bx is often used for random arrival processes, like radioactive decay. The form y is equal to a times sine b of x could be used for periodic processes, like modeling the path of a pendulum. Generally, a good model describes the data well and has as few parameters as possible. We'll talk more concretely about how to measure this later. Hopefully, the idea that the prediction should be close to the observations is intuitive to you. To explain the point about minimizing the number of parameters, have a look at this figure. The line fits the observed data exactly, but it's quite useless for prediction or explanation. It turns out that by increasing the number of parameters, we can make a model which fits the data exactly. This is known as overfitting. Data has been overfit when the model and the fit parameters correspond too closely, or in this case exactly, to a particular set of data. There are many reasons this is bad. Firstly, the goal of model fitting is to predict new observations, and an overfit model will fail to predict future observations because it's too specifically tuned to the input data. The second reason is that very complex models are hard to reason about. We often want to interpret the parameters to gain some insight into the system. For example, the slope may tell us about the increase in risk of heart disease with age. If the model has a complicated form with many parameters, the effect of each one is hard to understand. The opposite to overfitting is underfitting. This means that there is structure in the data that the model does not capture. 
For example, here there is clearly some curvature at large values of x. However, a simple linear model cannot capture curvature, and we say that this model underfits the data. In this case, a more complex model, or a transformation of the data, would be appropriate both for making better predictions and for understanding the system. Model selection is a case where you need to use your judgment and your knowledge of the problem domain, together with various statistical metrics for fit quality, in order to choose the right model. The quote, often attributed to Einstein, that summarizes this is that models should be as simple as possible, but no simpler.